Well, welcome everybody. Aloha. Welcome to the Libra solar eclipse and new moon distant Reiki share. I'm so grateful to be here gathered with everybody in our sacred circle live and those who are listening later. I am available for one-on-one -on -one Reiki sessions as well as a variety of astrology readings. So if you're curious how the eclipses are working with your chart or you want to go into your galactic astrology, please definitely reach out. I would love to connect with you. I'm really excited on October 12th. I'm teaching another class of Astrology Basics with Reiki, and this class will be on the elements, the modes, and that's referring to the zodiac signs, so the elements and the modes within the zodiac signs, as well as the house types. So when we put the elements and the modes and mix it with the houses, this class will include a Reiki journey, and it also includes two brand new pre-recorded lessons on the house types. So when you register for this event, for this class, you will be able to access those lessons immediately. So I hope that's helpful. Just kind of changing it up every time, trying something new, always learning with how best to present the information in digestible, integratable ways that supports the students and all involved. So on November 1st is the Scorpio New Moon Distant Reiki Share. So I host these every new moon, not just eclipses. So once a month, every month, and the date changes depending on when the new moon is. So you can learn more about all of this and more on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I know recently I had a question come in about when is the next Reiki 1 and 2 training, and I don't have one scheduled just yet. So if you're interested in taking that class with me, let me know, and we will make sure and get one of those classes on the books soon. So today is the Libra solar eclipse at the time of the Reiki share at the time of this recording. This is why we've gathered and it is occurring at 10 degrees and two minutes of Libra. And I was blessed and fortunate enough in Hawaii to be able to actually see it this morning just after sunrise. It was really, really incredible. It was like the sun was rising with this, you know, partial eclipse happening where it looked like, it almost looked like a crescent moon, but it wasn't that much of a partial eclipse. It was like, I don't know, really, really wild, but the sun was looking like the moon. And so I had a chance to really connect with that energy and, and contemplate you know, what is, what is all this about? And thinking about the miracle of the divine alignment that occurs for an eclipse to occur, the sun, the moon, and the earth have to be in this perfect alignment. There's a time factor where the moon has to be just right in its orbit for this to occur. So many different factors you know, that we only get these special events a few times a year, usually two different times in the year, we'll have these sets of eclipses and that the eclipses are really for us an invitation to divinely align and to be confirmed in our own divine alignment and also realign where realignment needs to occur but to just understand that this is this is cosmic support from the sun the moon and the earth all working together to help us align with the mission and the purpose of our soul and spirit and why we are here so that's what was coming through this morning 
And with the eclipses in particular, you know, it's, it's not, it's like what kind of light codes, it's all kinds of light codes, but it's, it's the sun codes, the moon codes, the earth codes, all coming together, harmonizing within ourselves, within our bodies, within our beings. And it just feels like such a profound moment of receiving and new beginnings with it being a new moon and solar eclipse, but also, you know, conjunct the south node, that any past residues and healing that needs to occur were very supported in that as well. So I'm excited to explore this with all of you in the journey in just a little while. So we have some big astrology this month, you know. Uh, we did have a question earlier, why is it so intense lately? And eclipse seasons can bring that intensity as we are finding ourselves in alignment, out of alignment, and this is happening no matter where somebody is on in terms of their evolution of their consciousness, whether they're operating from, you know, lower vibrations or much higher vibrations, this is happening for, for everybody. So it can be a time of intensity and pressure and feeling like, all this resistance coming up and different things purging and, you know, the need to support ourselves, be compassionate for ourselves and also be compassionate and understand, you know, somebody who's not on a healing path of love and compassion and forgiveness is going through this too and, and probably really, really struggling with it and, and wrestling with it. So that's one element. And then another element of the intensity is, well, really both Jupiter and Pluto, which we can take a look at now. Jupiter is stationing retrograde on October 8th at 21 degrees, 20 minutes of Gemini. And this can bring up, Gemini is a dual sign it's about duality and it it can be jupiter can be at its lower frequency manifestation you know ramping up that devices divisiveness and you know lower frequencies of duality and polarity and you know i'm wanting to say yeah yeah like just kind of um counterproductive speech right counterproductive communication and a higher frequency, you know, Jupiter stationing retrograde, when a planet stations retrograde or direct, when it's changing directions from our perspective on Earth, the symbolism of that planet is amplified. So Jupiter is already like a huge energy, you know, our biggest planet. And so the Jupiterian energy is, is certainly amplified now, you know, really starting now and will be amplified for another like two weeks. So, you know, on either side of this October 8th, this Gemini energy is really strong. So our mental energy is, is very strong. And so being mindful of where your mind is, how your mental, emotional body is operating, what's being said, and to tune into yourself, tune into quiet and stillness, go within, you know, this can be, this can be very noisy and, you know, what's true and what's not true, that kind of thing. What's really interesting, what we could tap into in the higher frequencies when we look at the star alignments is this particular degree of Gemini is linked to the star Bellatrix in Orion constellation. This is one of the shoulder stars of Orion constellation. It's a star of success and fame and glory and very beautiful things, powerful things. It's a powerful divine feminine warrior energy type of a star. And this morning preparing these slides, I was asking for know more information on that and the phrase that came was this indomitable 
spirit, this like just incredibly strong, deep, resilient spirit that we have a chance to connect with in Jupiter aligning to this particular star. And understanding too, Orion constellation is very loaded with many different healing themes as this is a place within the cosmos, a frequency of consciousness within the cosmos that underwent polarization and, and dualistic ways of being far more exaggerated than even what we've experienced on earth. And what's happening on earth is kind of like an echo of like some of those traumas and ways and like memories playing out. And so as beings on a healing path, we can recognize any of those ancient traumas or residues from the past and let go of them at this time that they need not be impacting our lives on earth right now and like staining humanity right now to invite Reiki to let those go or work with whatever spiritual practice or healing modality resonates with you to go ahead and let those go. And that we're protected in that process as well. Jupiter is a planet of protection and will be also retrograding back and connecting with Regal star in Orion. This is another protection star in the foot of Orion constellation. So we get this more inward expression of Jupiter from October 8th until February 3rd of next year. Jupiter will be stationing direct. So what does that mean? Jupiter is our function of searching for truth and knowledge. It's a teacher. It's an expander. It's a bringer of fortune. It's it's energizing. It's enlarging. So really accessing all of those functions from within oneself. And if you have like an internalized sense of that, like fortune maker and abundance creator and the inner teacher and the inner protector, the guardian. I'm hearing the guardian. If you have, if you're born with Jupiter retrograde, this period might feel like, oh man, this is comfortable. You know, like things feel like normal. This is your modus operandi. Like this is what you're used to. This is how you normally operate. So that's something to be mindful of in your chart. Do you have Jupiter retrograde natally? And do you have any planets or points from in this degree range from 11 degrees, 16 minutes of Gemini to 21 degrees and 20 minutes of Gemini? Then this will be a particularly powerful process for you. Adding further to our intensity, Pluto has been transiting the final degree of Capricorn. And this has been a background energy we've been dealing with for the, the whole month of September. We were working with this and we will continue working with this actually until November 19th. Pluto transiting this final degree of Capricorn is certainly revealing the lack of effectiveness and efficiencies, you know, the weaknesses and hierarchies and structures and kind of how consensus reality, all the different elements and facets of consensus reality and how we're needing to change into this, this new paradigm, this Aquarian paradigm, this, you know, we're all connected. We're a family of humanity. We're a family of the earth. We're family to the stars too and the, the other planets. We are ready to be connected to the wider universe and conscious of that connection because we all already are, but to be conscious of that connection and, and act in a way that, that reflects that in alignment with that. So we're seeing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? As Capricorn, as Pluto transits this final degree of Capricorn, because Pluto is a planet, it's going to bring everything up, you know, it's bringing things up. And it's not because it's 
inherently evil or malefic in my view it's because it, it's inviting transformation it's inviting mastery it's inviting us to alchemize and to move into a higher state of awareness and a higher state of being and in some ways to like get out of denial about certain things that we need to get out of denial and and face head on Pluto has been retrograde since May 2nd and on October 11th, it will station direct. So we're feeling that Plutonian Pluto and Capricorn symbolism even more so as we enter October and then for at least a week prior to that, also feeling that that Plutonian awareness, that that transformational metamorphic going to face everything that needs to be faced because we're capable and we're ready and we're ready for what's next, our next level of awareness and growth and mastery and power. October 11th until November 19th, Pluto will be moving through that final degree of Capricorn and finally November 19th, it will enter Aquarius and it will be staying in Aquarius for the next 20 years. So this is our last time in this lifetime to experience Pluto and Capricorn in this next, you know, month and a half, essentially. So the question becomes, what final Capricorn lessons do you need to become aware of at this time? Do you need to integrate at this time on your personal healing journey, things like self-responsibility and grounding and any structures that might be in divine alignment and really support you and just any other kinds of earth and material world matters that you may need to be looking at at this time. And also what can help too is knowing where's the sign of Capricorn in your birth chart, where's the sign of Aquarius in your birth chart, and wherever that last degree of Capricorn is will give you a clue about, you know, the planet, the point, the life area, the house placement that is inviting you into this moment of mastery and needs transformation and needs a little bit of light and attention. And you'll know, <laughs> you'll know where this is. And, you know, that this is a beautiful time of preparation too, and really grounding because as Pluto re-enters Aquarius, this is like we're taking off, you know, it's immediately interacting with stars within the bird constellations, the various bird constellations, Lyra, the vulture, and Cygnus, the swan, and Altair, the Aquila, the eagle. So we'll, we will be flying once again, but, you know, is there anything on the on the land, on the ground that needs being taken care of? And now's your time. And there's there's support for that. There's powerful support for that. So watch for that. And some other October transits I wanted to mention here on October 13th, Mercury enters Scorpio. And when it does so, it will be giving us a blast of Shapley Attractor. Shapley Attractor is a very powerful super cosmic point, a cosmic anomaly that is the, basically the source of the known universe and is also drawing the known universe back into it. It's a higher order black hole, essentially, and just incomprehensibly powerful and massive and absolutely incredible. So we can open our minds to that consciousness. You know, we're being supported to open our minds to that. And this is also like mental manifestation being like quick and jazzed because it's Shapley Attractor. There is this attraction principle. So definitely being aware of what your mind is where your mind is, what your thoughts are, and to focus your thoughts and your minds on, you know, what you want to create, what you want to bring in, catch yourself if you're going into worry, fear, anxiety, those lower vibrations, and 
try to keep a keep a focus. Mercury and Scorpio can help us focus where we need to focus, but this is a beautiful aspect for channeling, for downloads, for, you know, automatic writing, journaling, for connecting too with beings beyond the veil as well. You know, this is already getting into Scorpio season, right, where the the veil is very thin. But this October 13th, this could be easier contact with beings beyond the veil. And, you know, that's completely open to any and all categories that that would include. So anybody, any galaxy, any timeline, it's it's all fair game. On October 17th, we have a powerful full moon in Aries, and I will be making a video about that. It is almost an eclipse. It's almost a lunar eclipse. So this is very strong, powerful energy here. And I have the chart of that up on screen. And it really, it's so dynamic, you know, full moon, sun opposite moon, and the sun will be conjunct these two beautiful stars, Spica and Arcturus, Spica very connected to our gifts and talents. So becoming aware of new or ancient gifts and talents at this time, Arcturus, the star of adventure and pathfinding and wayfinding and, and also very beautiful, pure, balanced energy, similar to Reiki, akin to Reiki, that we can really connect with and be healing with. The moon, interestingly, is aligned to the star in Eridanus constellation, the river constellation. And the river constellation is so massive, it covers multiple zodiac signs. So this is this is a new star. I've not looked into Akamar star. So I'm excited to connect with that one. What's interesting and powerful about this full moon additionally is, you know, sun opposite moon, and it's actually in a grand cross with a cardinal grand cross with Mars and Cancer opposite Pluto and Capricorn. So this is a biggie. This is a this is a real biggie of a full moon. Very powerful, very dynamic, life changing. You know, this can be life changing, uh deeply transformational and very revealing too. But like certain things can really connect and like like manifest in in physical reality the invitation here certainly to come into the center of all this don't polarize don't scatter and yeah breathe <laughs> hearing that breathe slow down it's aries so aries wants to be fast but if we could slow down and really breathe and stay centered i think this is this is extremely powerful what we have there at the time of the full moon, Venus is at the last degree of Scorpio, but she will be moving into Sagittarius on October 17th. So looks like eight hours later, she moves into Sagittarius. This is a big frequency change. And on her way into Sag, she's aligning with Alpha Centauri star, also known as Ptolemon. And this is a star in Centaurus constellation. Centaurus constellation is linked to Chiron, the healer, teacher, mentor. So this could be a really profound moment of healing, healing our relationships, healing with women, healing our inner divine feminine, healing through adventure and travel as well, Venus and Sagittarius as she moves into Sagittarius. But just taking note of this, this opportunity, whatever's coming up at the full moon, to take some pause and, and accept that invitation for healing and mentorship. And this could be you know, you as healer, teacher, mentor, connecting with somebody else in that role, or even connecting with, you know, a spiritual being like an archangel that is having that role for you. So it could really happen in many different ways and not even limited to what I just shared there. 
On October 22nd, we really kick off Scorpio season. The sun enters Scorpio and again, we'll make a conjunction with Shapley Attractor. So just a little while ago, Mercury will have transited this Shapley Attractor. The sun will be activating Shapley. So we have this other moment, this other powerful moment to connect with beings beyond the veil, great for channeling, great for intuitive work, great for manifesting and really reflecting on, you know, what do you want to bring in? What do you want to empower? And to know that that power is within you. You have that power within you. So really, really incredible. Both these dates, you know, just incredible for galactic contact and contact with spiritual beings and any kind of spiritual work you might be wanting to undergo having truths revealed too we could see more of that you know personally and collectively certainly with these big shapley attractor act activations all right so we're about to do our reiki journey so I just wanted to mention the two stars that this eclipse is highlighting, two of the stars. There are so many different stars, but the sun and the moon really highlighting these stars in the arms of Virgo constellation. So Vendemiatrix in the right arm of Virgo and then Parima star in the left elbow of Virgo constellation. And Vendemiatrix comes from Greek through the Latin grape harvestress. So it's all about collection and gathering and also abundance. In China, it represents the second Eastern general. So there's this frequency of leadership there as well. Parima, interestingly, comes from the ancient Roman goddess of the future and prophecy. So really, really cool and interesting to see in the journey what might come in for you, what what you might be collecting, and also what kind of you know future visioning that this is really, really powerful. Parima in China represents the first Eastern minister. So really interesting. General minister, the gatherer, future, the prophecy all having to do with this Virgo constellation, this divine feminine goddess energy. So that's where we are headed in the journey. <laughs> we'll see how it unfolds interacting with these stars. So yes, I'm going to stop my share now.